Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak to you all tonight. Um, my name is Monica Diorio, and I wanted to talk to you tonight because I know what it is to find yourself pregnant, not married, and 19 years old. I was afraid to tell anyone, and I was unsure how I would care for a baby. I'd been going to Planned Parenthood to get birth control pill. I was four months pregnant when I went in to be counseled by someone at Planned Parenthood. The woman who counseled me gave me only one option, abortion. She did not offer to help me find resources in the community that would help me keep my baby, nor did she suggest adoption. She only offered one option, an abortion, she said she would now explain the abortion process. In spite of her knowing that I was four months pregnant, she said what I had inside of me was only a blob of tissue. Science proves that a woman who is four months pregnant is carrying a baby with a beating heart. The baby inside of me had a heart that had been beating since the third week. The baby that was inside of me could feel pain. This is why doctors who operate on babies at, at or beyond 20 weeks, while still in their mother's womb, use anesthesia. All of her pain receptors were present. All of her fingers and toes and eyes and ears were present. Again, as she was explaining to me that it was only a blob of tissue and just a gentle suctioning would vacuum out the contents, I began to cry. God's grace washed over me, and even though I was young and naive in many ways, I knew that she was lying to me. I stood up and began to leave the room. She called out to me as I was leaving, not to offer comfort or support, not to find out why I was crying. She said to me, if you're going to have an abortion, you should come back soon. You're getting kind of far along now. I remember thinking to myself, if it is just a blob of tissue, what difference does it make? I walked out of that room and Planned Parenthood, and I never thought of abortion again. The following spring, I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, the same baby that had been in my womb that day. I ask each one of you to think to yourself the last ultrasound that you were shown. Whose baby was the ultrasound image of? A friend, a relative, a coworker, or perhaps it was your own baby's ultrasound. No doubt the mother or father showed it to you with great joy saying, let me show you a picture of my baby. You probably remarked at how cute the baby was. Why is it that those who are for abortion seem to forget or dismiss all of the ultrasound images they have ever seen, which showed a baby alive and growing safely inside its mother's womb? We have scientific and photographic evidence that it is a baby, a precious human life. Please remember the ultrasounds you have seen. Please remember this evidence of a baby's life in the womb. I am so grateful that I did not have an abortion. I am so grateful that I chose life. I would not have my beautiful daughter who has grown up and lives in Rhode Island. I also would not have my grandson for my daughter married and had a little boy. He is the light of my life. You see, with abortion, you are not just ending the life of the baby in the womb, but the lives of the many generations to come. I am currently volunteering as the director for the Deborah K. Falacaro Pregnancy Center of Westerly, Rhode Island. I wanted to testify today to express to you that I believe it is misguided compassion to enact laws that allow mothers faced with an unplanned pregnancy the legal right to end the life of her baby. These women should be offered genuine compassion real help and actual support in a way that does not leave their baby lifeless and in pieces. 
Pro-life pregnancy help centers have free pregnancy tests available, caring people to talk to in a confidential setting, material resources such as diapers, baby clothes, car seats, and baby furniture, educational offerings, referrals for resources in the community, and some are able to offer free ultrasounds. Pregnancy centers provide support for these needs, which can help them overcome many of the concerns they have in giving birth to the baby within their womb. If they cannot keep their baby in spite of the help offered, they can be presented with the option of adoption. There are many couples who would adopt these babies and lavish on them so much love. We are also here to help mothers who have chosen abortion. Many of them have deep pain and wounds that need to be healed. We are there to help and love them as well. Pregnancy help centers are places that truly care about the mother, father, and the baby. This is showing true compassion. If the baby's parents, their families, and friends cannot provide all of what they need, we are here for them. This is the answer, not abortion. The answer was not to make this choice to end the life of unborn babies legal. The answer is not to expand these laws to be even more heinous so as to include killing a baby up to the moment of birth or to let it die after it is born because it is so-called unwanted. Are we actually talking about infanticide in America? This is not who we are. I can assure you that while some politicians in New York and elsewhere may be celebrating such things, many Americans are watching this jubilation at the death of these little babies in shock and horror. We are all God's children no matter what your faith. God calls us to love. The answer is to love the woman who finds herself in a crisis pregnancy situation. The answer is to provide material and emotional support to her. The answer is to connect her with community resources so that she can be lifted out of whatever situation made her think she couldn't choose life for her unborn baby. This is what I'm we strive to, to do. Ma'am, uh, yes, I'm ma sorry to interrupt, but could yes, I just ask you to move along? We're at yes, ma'am, I'm eight almost minutes. done. Thanks. Thank you. This is what we strive to do at our pregnancy center. I know that there are many other pregnancy help centers and charitable organizations that stand ready to help mothers, fathers, and babies in need. In closing, I ask the men and women who are voting on this bill to please choose life. This is not a women's issue only. It is an issue for men as well. It is not a Democrat issue or a Republican issue. It is a human issue. Each man and woman voting should, should vote with not only the mother who is in the crisis pregnancy in mind, but also the baby girls and boys who are in danger of losing their lives. Please remember my story and the testimony that I have provided. Remember the ultrasounds that you have seen in your life which clearly show unborn babies and the scientific evidence that proves that they are not blobs of tissue, but unique babies with their own DNA and beating hearts. Please remember that the reason you are sitting here is because God created you and loves you. Please remember also that each of you are sitting here because your mothers chose life. You have been blessed to serve in these positions. As leaders, you are required to protect and defend all life, including preborn and newly born babies. Each one of us will be held accountable before God for the choices that we make. I pray for all of you and for all of our leaders for your well-being. I also pray that you would choose true, choose true compassion and protect and defend the sanctity of life, especially during this critical time in our nation's history when we must choose between misguided compassion, which culminates in the killing of babies, or true compassion and help for the mother and her baby, which culminates in life for these little ones who need you to be their voice and vote for life. Thank you.